What's going on, everyone, and welcome to the Bros Talking Soccer Podcast. My name is Dave Knittel. Today, I am joined by Paul Behan. He was the founder of the Football Kit Box. Paul, how you doing? Hi, guys. How's it going? Doing well, man. Thank you for, for joining us. People that are joining us live on YouTube, hello, welcome. Please feel free. Interact with us as we go along here. Any questions for me? Any questions for Paul? I have the chat feature up here in the background. Would love to uh, would love to ask him. And if you're watching this at some point in the future, please still interact. And uh, we check the message boards. And uh, you know, would love to love to hear from you. So with that, I think we're ready to to get into the podcast. Get to the interview. Paul, any last questions? Let's go. All right, let's do it. All right, I'd like to welcome on Paul Behan, founder of the Football Kit Box, which is a subscription service bringing football or what we call soccer merchandise right to your door. Paul, welcome to Bros Talking Soccer. How are you doing today? Thank you so much for having me. I'm doing good. Me too? I'm doing well. Yeah, we're excited to have you on. So thanks for, for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself, maybe where you're from and where you live now? Uh, originally from Dublin, uh, capital city of Ireland, but I live on the West Coast now. Uh, Voted the friendliest city in the world by Lonely Planet recently, Galway. Beautiful. It's uh, by the Atlantic coast. Uh, there's zero crime. Everybody's really friendly. There's great beer. There's great dancing, great drinking, uh, good arts. Just really, really great place to live and to bring up um, bring up a family. And just, yeah, really, really great place. That sounds like paradise, man. I got I to gotta check that out. I haven't been to Ireland yet, but uh, that definitely sounds like a place I want to get to. Uh, yeah. So. So can you tell us, um, obviously you, you have a passion for soccer. I'm going to call it soccer. You can call it football, whatever you want to call it. But ha has it always been a passion of yours or can you tell us about your, your passion for the sport? Yeah, uh, you, I have, Ireland's a little bit different from probably some of the, the, the UK people that you would have on because we obviously have a separate sport here called Gaelic football. Are you familiar with that? I am actually. Yeah, so football here is actually Gaelic football. So some people call soccer here in Ireland football or is soccer or sometimes it's football. Uh, so it's a little bit kind of confusing depending on where you are because the bigger sports in Ireland, the two main sports are hurling and football, but it's Gaelic football. So um, yeah, I, I, but I call it football. Soccer is football. So we're, we, we're <laughs> going to have that complication for the rest of the podcast. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, so yeah, I I've been into to football since since I was a child. I uh, always had a, a bit of a soft spot for jerseys or do you call call them jerseys or shirts or jerseys, uniforms kits, or yeah, uh, all of them work for me. Well, kit is I suppose the word I'm using uh, at the moment because that's you know suits everybody. <laughs> uh, so I always had a soft spot um, since 1983, Manchester United uh, jersey got as a child and um through the years then i have some uh, retro ones i still have in my collection that, that are not for sale anybody watching uh, some <laughs> of them are and um went on then never never really played because i was into i was playing gaelic football i was playing hurling and then uh, later on uh, when i went to college i studied to be an adventure sports instructor so i was mountaineering kayaking climbing sailing, uh, orienteering, uh, a lot of adventure sports, um, but always throughout that time continued to play five-a-side. Um, Astro, do you, do you guys call it Astro or five-a-side? or Five-a-side. Five-a-side. So I always played on the streets with my mates and, and played that as well. Uh, never actually played 11-a-side till I was 30 years of age, <laughs> uh, uh, for an official team. And that was one of my goals as a 30-year-old. So I uh, went on, scored a goal on my debut. Uh, nice. So, uh, that was nice. Uh, didn't score again for another couple of months, yeah, whatever. Uh, so, yeah, um, collected a few jerseys there. I, I, I liked I liked jerseys to wear. I wouldn't be a collector collector, you know. Some people have like hundreds of them or they put them in plastic or put them behind frames. Uh, I was always, if I liked the jersey, I'd have it. And I, I, and I still, the collection bar one or two of the special ones still come out for the five aside myself and uh you know uh i like to wear them uh if you pick them up in charity shops or if i saw deals online you know i'd always treat myself you know and, and have a soft spot for that that's always what made me feel like a, a 10 year old boy again you know there's there's, there's nothing more, more uh 
I suppose it makes you feel like a kid again when you when you, when you get a brand new shirt, especially if it's from a different country or from a something rare or something unusual. I always kind of love that element of it. Uh, I turned into a family man and grew up a little bit. I uh, have four boys now. I have a seventeen-year-old, a uh, seven-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-year-old. So. Recently, uh, I've been in sales for about 10 years, and recently I went back looking at kit and couldn't believe the price of it. Uh, it's not quite as bad as America, where you have to pay $100 for a new shirt, which is mental. Yeah. Um, but it's still still pricey, especially when you have four uh, boys. Uh, that's that's going to add up. So I started looking at different places where, where you could buy kit online. I uh, started making some connections. Uh, started selling a little bit to friends or, you know, just kind of building um, a, bit, a, a bit of a following, a bit of an interest. And then I uh, came across a few interesting suppliers that do kind of clearing stock from the last few years and some beautiful stuff, again, from all around the world, from more the more unusual uh, club and country stuff. And um, Football Kit Box was born, um, made up a few boxes for friends, for families, loved it. They just loved it to give to their kids. Um, the kids who opened it on their birthday and they had jerseys and, and zippies and hats and scarves from all over the world um, unusual because Ireland is it's very Man United, Liverpool maybe the, the younger kids might be Chelsea, Man City you know the older generation are Leeds you know mm -hmm. the, we wouldn't have because we kind of look to the UK for for our football fix, um, you would have less sort of diversity in what, in what, in what the type of clubs that people follow. Uh, that's obviously changed. You know, the world is getting very small now and, and, and people are following La Liga and Syria and even the MLS, some of them. Um, nice, love it. <laughs> no, well, I'm more, I'm more non-league uh, USA <laughs> myself, yeah. pro Um <laughs> So... So yeah, I made up a few boxes. The feedback was really, really good. Uh, and and when from, was this? Just for so, just so oh, we can months, get a picture. Only six months ago. Okay, so it's a fairly recent thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're literally brand new, pretty much. You know. Um, so the feedback was different. Uh, the feedback from people who were into kit was, "This is really cool. This, uh, this is really unusual." Uh, the feedback from mothers was uh, the cost uh, because. It was cheaper for them to buy a tracksuit and a zippy and a rain jacket with Crystal Palace or Zenit St. Petersburg or something on it than it was to actually just buy a blank Nike or Adidas or Puma one. Um, so the feedback in terms of value and quality and diversity, and yeah, it, it was there. So I, I decided to, to expand it, uh, went through the social media channels, uh, just got in there on time with when Roma uh, started their Twitter revolution. Uh, connected with them early enough. Connected with Saint Anthony's, the mm -hmm. most sought after shirt in on Twitter at the moment. Uh, only a handful of people out there have it, um, and they were really helpful. They were really, really good. They're really, really, really good guys. Like you know, and really, they're only a small junior league club from uh, Govan in Glasgow, and they have 8,000 followers on Twitter, which is insane. I don't even think they've ever had 8,000 people at one of their games. So um, they've been really, really good. And then uh, connected with Gabagda. All right, who is that? Gabagda FC from Lagos in wow, uh, Nigeria. Nigeria. Yeah, so uh, these uh, this is the first kind of international club I uh, I connected with. You can see they have the uh, can't really see that can I? Yeah. Oh wow, that's really cool. So people that are that are just listening to this podcast, make sure to go check out the video. So Paul's got kits behind him, and he's also rocking the the Nigeria kit, uh, the the team from Lagos uh, kit. Uh, so yeah, make sure to go watch that, check out the video as well. Yeah, sorry, I totally forgot we were uh, yeah just audio for some people, so they can't see this. Um, <laughs> and obviously, make sure to check it out for Paul's beautiful <laughs> face too. Uh, yeah, so um, with that, I kind of um, Roma are really really good. You know, they're bringing the world of football together. You know, they're really really good PR uh, uh, initiative, and um, 
started talking to clubs all around the world directly and they liked what i was doing so they started sending in kit uh wanderers here for the people who are on youtube or who are going to check it out later um if you know your football or your soccer you you will know that uh wanderers were one of the original founding uh, members of the FA, and they were founded in 1859. They won the FA Cup for the very first time, and I'm one of the only suppliers in the world, uh, <laughs> I, and I only have a handful of those. They're beautiful, they're gorgeous, and it's a real piece of history. Uh, I'm sure some of your um, your American fans would love them because I know you guys uh, would have it have it have a shorter timeline and uh, and history. So to see, and it's actually stitched onto the shirt, 1859. So uh, I do have about six or seven of them left. So if there is any American um, fans that are into like uh, really old world stuff, uh, definitely get in touch because yeah, 1859, like I mean, there's some, there's most cities weren't even built in America at that <laughs> stage, you know what I mean? Like, so it's, uh, so just finding out and connecting with the clubs and talking to them, you know, and, and originally just talking to their Twitter admin, then talking to their marketing people, talking to their fans, some tiny little clubs, um, featuring some African clubs uh, next next month. And um, they're just amazed at how people all over the world, um, there's, I, I just had a photograph in there. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. They, um, one of my, my first kickboxer from New Zealand got a Sunday league team sporting crabs, <laughs> literally one team. There's only like 13 or 14 of them. They don't have any fans. They don't have any underage teams. They are tiny, but the coach is a graphic designer and he kind of ripped off the Mexican World Cup shirt, but it's lovely. And this um, New Zealand uh, kickboxer posted one in Auckland. And these guys are only the lads down the pub, you know, and they, <laughs> can't believe they have a fan in new zealand you know and that's that's happened with the saint anthony's jerseys and the wanderers and it's so it's bringing new fans new followers uh to the new team so that was a bit of a pivot uh for me a few months ago about three months ago originally i was just going with the more established the bigger teams that everybody mm -hmm. knew um uh, your lazios and your barcelonas and this kind of stuff but recently uh, it's the smaller teams uh Chagos Island, this isn't even a country yet. Hmm. You know Diego Garcia in the Indian Ocean? I do not. Well, all that's there now is a British and American military base. And hmm. in the 60s and 70s, uh, the military came in and they ejected everybody out of, of the islands. They literally made refugees of the few hundred uh, people that were there because it's smack bang in the middle of the Indian Ocean. So they removed everyone. There's a, there's a refugee community in London, uh, Chagos Island. They have a hashtag, let us return. And these are all sons and daughters or grandsons and daughters of the original refugees. And they want to go back. But obviously the military uh, ruled the world, uh, especially in the strategic locations. So Kanifa, are you familiar with Kanifa? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but so listeners, you, listeners may not be. So, do you want to explain? Yeah. So, it's basically the nations or groups of people or disenfranchised uh, people or refugees who are not strictly technically countries, but are still uh, legitimate entities. Um, so, they are uh, groups of uh, amateurs, usually, uh, who are playing each other. They played in the World Cup. Uh, Last year, the European Championships coming up. Uh, so these guys all live in London, but they're obviously are from uh, Ch Chagossian, uh, they call themselves. Um, these little stories uh, are just brilliant. They're, they're the, the, the kind of stories football is all about bringing people together now, whereas traditionally it was about rivalry and keeping people apart. Um, there's, a, there's a new sort of appreciation for for different teams, different countries, and and different stories out there, and that's that's what's really exciting about what I'm what I'm doing at the moment, and and that's when I want to bring the two worlds together: people who enjoy football, but like nice kit as well, like to learn a little bit, and uh, and look cool playing Astros. Uh.
Absolutely. So, uh, and I think social media has played a huge role in kind of the world just coming, coming more together. And it's amazing for what it's done. It's done for your business. You answered actually a lot of questions that I had, but just taking uh, maybe a step back. So inspiration we got, but what's actually included in, in the kit box? Does it, does it vary up or is it always like the same few items? Uh, so can, can you just explain maybe for listeners, like what, um, I, so your process, first of all, and then what's included in the kit box for actually, like if I sign up as a customer, what can I expect? Uh, okay, well, there's two main ways to sign up. Uh, number one is uh, we have uh, I have a set kit box every month, so you can go online and you can see what the January kit box is. Uh, the February kit box is going to be launched in a couple of days, and you'll know exactly what you're getting. Save there'll be a few surprises and a few little goodies in there, mm-hmm. but um, normally um, you get three pieces of kit in every box. So it might be a zippy, it might be a rain jacket, it might be a jersey, it might be a t-shirt, a hat, a scarf, uh, three pieces of kit that you um, you can wear or collect or, or do whatever you want. <laughs> um, and that's uh, that's that's the set uh, kit box. I've been doing that really since November. And then there is the other one, it's the custom kit box. So you can go on and you sign up. Um, so you can sign up for monthly, you can sign up for once off, kit box you can get it biannually or you can get it quarterly and um you can go on there and just after you sign up there's a preferences form so you could say you can list up to 10 clubs or countries so for example if you were signing up which you're going to right mm-hmm. um, <laughs> <laughs> you could have philadelphia union you could have san jose earthquakes you could have um us mnt uh you could have you know who uh, who's in Barcelona you can have a Juventus you can have it so basically you list your your preferences and then I will try my best it's not always possible because it depends on your size and depends on availability and depends what the suppliers have but sometimes I might come across a cool retro Juventus shirt and I go ah oh, I look through my customer list and I say right who's the Juventus supporter okay cool do I have it in his size yeah yeah, yeah. and I'll include that in there um, and that's a nice sort of surprise. So the custom box is a little bit more of a surprise, and that's actually way more popular. I thought people would be a little bit more, yeah, I want to know exactly what I want to get. Mm-hmm. But the custom kit box is actually is, is more um, is more popular. People like the element of surprise, and that gives me a little bit more scope. I, I prefer that myself as well, because after the, they list their, pre- their, their 10 clubs or countries, they can list their preferences. So you could say, oh, I only want Bundesliga or I want La Liga or South American or Japanese or, you know, like I have one customer who just wants Japanese and Scandinavian stuff. That's all he wants. So that gives me great scope. When I come across something particularly special, then I go, oh, okay, cool. He's going to like that. Um, that's really cool. It's really kind of personal um, uh, to a certain extent. That's yeah. That that's awesome to hear. Yeah, I I ha- I, I customize and, and hand uh, hand pick and and hand make every single kit box at the moment, which is fun, exhausting, uh, <laughs> but it means that every single box that people get is tailored and boxed up with TLC, blood, sweat, and tears, uh, especially for them. So no. It's very, very rare uh, that two kit boxes are the same. Even if they get the same January or February kit box, um, I have uh, like in the January kit box. Hang on. Yep. I had little uh, surprises for some people. You're an Arsenal fan, are you? Uh, Liverpool. Oh well, you won't like this. So. <laughs> All right. So we're. Oh wow, we got old school JVC sponsorship the mug. Blues. The Brews Banana. Um, so they, so that was a, a little um, and programs, all retro programs as well. So and, and little pin badges, and uh, we had some stickers from PDX represent, um, you know, from Portland. Yep. Yep. Uh, so they sent some stickers. So uh, you know, little, little little kind of trinkets and little surprises as well that are sort of football related. And if I can tailor them two people's preferences as well. Uh, you'd be amazed. Like I, I sent somebody a Lincoln City cup and I would know nothing about Lincoln City. Like they're a small little uh, League One or League Two team. 
but he was over the moon. He, he was just made up because it's, it's so unusual. It's really fascinating to hear. So you touched on on this question uh, a bit, and it seems like it can be very, very customized. But for maybe the more the more set kits, so the ones where people can go in, I think you had you had St. Anthony's, uh, and then you had a couple others that I remember from from the website. For those set ones, I guess how did that relationship come about? You said you said social media, um, and so now as you've continued to evolve, are you still the one sort of reaching out to them? Are teams coming to you? What, what's that process like? Uh, it's a little bit of both, yeah. So I'm just connecting and 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 speaking. And as other clubs are seeing that um, other clubs feature, they're getting in touch and saying, "Hey, how do we get involved here?" Or you know, can can we be part of the story? Because I I guess it's it's beneficial on two counts for 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 the clubs. Um, they'll they'll gain new followers uh, and new exposure. And if they I don't know if maybe not for yourself but all your scars but did you ever get a, a jersey or pick up a, a or get a present or pick up a jersey when you were on holiday did you get some shirts somewhere in an unusual location you, well all the scarves are are basically my version of that so uh i i have oh. that reaction i think the reaction that you have when you get kits is the reaction i have when i get when i get okay. scarves all of these are Perfect. from my travels yeah okay so i see your west brom scarf there so and you're saying Pauly do you have a different relationship with West Brom than other English clubs and St. Pauly with other Bundesliga clubs do you have a soft spot for them? Uh, none uh, to be honest and not necessarily so I am a little bit weird in that I have maybe a soft soft spot for the city and I more connect my experiences of when I got those scarves with what was happening at that time so I guess it's not technically a relationship with the teams because you know I have a you know, a United scarf and Everton scarf. I'm a Liverpool fan. And so I don't necessarily have soft spots for them. I more have soft spots for where I was, you know, state of mind, who I was with when I got them, those types of, of things. Okay. Well, I suppose, yeah, similar enough, but uh, a lot of people would have, yeah, not if they deliberately went out and bought something of a team that they support, but if an uncle came home from holidays or, or they're on holidays and they bought a shirt from somewhere or we, we, because we have, the jersey, our, our attitude changes a little bit towards towards the club. You know, in in the main, I've talked to a lot of people about this. So, it's building, I suppose, new relationships with with these teams. Um, is that a motoric? Scarf, I see. It is there? so. Yeah, yeah and so, that, so that's actually my my newest one. I I just got that. Brilliant. Okay. Well, see what they're doing. You know, with their kids. I mean, there's so much them and Providence and uh, Pacific and uh, snow, snow, snow. Uh, the non-league clubs out there. You know, especially in partnership with Icarus. Uh, I, I got to go talking to Icarus. These guys, you know, are making some beautiful, beautiful kits. And the and they're doing it right because they know if they, um, like Low Country, I think we're one of the first to to kind of. For me to see on this side of the Atlantic, you know that the shirt was was a signature piece. It was a, it was a, it was a fashion item. It was, you know, it's something you know that was very, very stylish. And I think the UK clubs are lagging behind a little bit, especially in the non-league world. They're just spewing out the same old We're teamwear, kind of what what's cheapest, you know. Yeah. Whereas if people, if I had a a motoric jersey, especially the jigsaw one, which mm -hmm. I'm trying to get. Um, I'll have a soft spot and I'll develop a different relationship. So I'll follow them online. If I turn into a fan, well, then maybe I might, you know, sign up to their mailing. I, maybe I might buy something from their club shop every year, you know. So it's it's a different way of the clubs reaching out to, to potential new fans all around the world rather than just in their local community. Absolutely. So two things you touched on there. First one, MLS is kind of going through the same thing that I think the UK is going through in that their jerseys are just getting incredibly stale. Uh, they have one kit manufacturer for the entire league. And you're seeing that it, it's, it, you know, somebody put on Twitter the other day, it literally five or six teams almost have the exact same jersey. They have a big thick stripe, you know, across horizontal, across the middle. And yeah, they have a couple different colors, but I've never liked that. And that's what I love the, the freedom that, you know, lower league teams and other teams can experience. Getting back to the other point that you were talking about there with kits, 
I completely relate to that. And that's why I don't buy kits. I only buy kits for teams that, that I support because it is a different sort of relationship when you actually put that on versus me just having a scarf up and, and displaying it. And so I can, you know, what you were talking about before with having a soft spot for teams where you actually get the kit, you know, I think it is spot on and I can completely relate to. So I uh, love what you're doing there. Sorry, did I break up at all or no? My my internet got a little funky there. No, no, it's still okay, good. All right, cool. Um, so yeah, so I can I you know I love what you're doing. It's it's an amazing sort of thing where you're connecting people all over the world and you know just being a part of that community online uh, is fantastic. And you know that's kind of how we got connected too uh, through through all these different different people. And so you know it's, it's awesome to to follow. So you touched on this a little bit, but logistically. At your one man operation, like how do you how do you physically like is your house just like do you have like a storage area? Like how do you physically like do all of this? <laughs> uh, I am not so sure. Um, <laughs> I, I sometimes I don't know. Um, um, yeah, I, I I mean I most of it's fairly streamlined. I mean I, I I'm kind of making conversations with with the suppliers and with the clubs i know exactly what i'm getting in advance i know what customers are coming along the next month uh, there is a little bit of storage there not not a whole pile um but that's that that's a sign it's going well um the goal is to is is, is to build this uh, and to build a particular type of platform that i'm that i'm using uh, i'm i'm talking to some uh, interesting tech guys who are, are are talking about a, a, a different type of platform that's going to allow me uh, scale it uh, a lot bigger and to bring that community of any football team in the world that wants to partake. But I can't really tell you a whole pile more about that <laughs> at the moment. Um, so yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind if it's if it's getting too much. Then that that means you know it's going well. So um, I'm happy. I'm happy. It, it's it's growing slowly and steadily and the feedback I get I mean people nearly everybody reaches out to me after they get their kit box some of them do it publicly online most people do it privately and and I nearly always get it right I mean they they just love it they they just it's like it's like Christmas some people say you know they they don't know exactly what they're getting they look forward to it every month they've got something new new to wear you know some I have include t-shirts and polo shirts and, and, and zippies and sweatshirts and things that people can wear on a day to day as well as um, as jerseys. Uh, also, as grown men uh, don't get many opportunities to wear, especially if you don't play Astro anymore or if, you, if, you're, if your knees are gone like me and um, you don't play anymore. So having the opportunity to uh, to rock in, especially men, you know, typically most of my customers are men uh, they don't, uh, they don't close uh, for themselves as, yeah. as much uh, as some other people. Just bear with me one second there, I, I have to plug it in. Okay. I think Paul's uh, computer's dying here, so stick with us. Okay. There we go. Uh, so yeah, if, 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 if um, a lot of customers are like me, uh, you know, I might get a, close to my birthday and, and for Christmas and I, I tend not to shop uh, for myself much because I have four kids and bills to pay so uh, all getting new threads is, is, is way down the list of uh, priorities so if someone else does that for me yeah that's that's usually a nice uh, nice bonus you know Absolutely. And so I should have mentioned this earlier, but anyone watching live on YouTube or listening to the podcast, we have uh, the website linked in the video description, podcast show notes, as well as uh, Paul's personal Twitter and the Twitter for uh, Football Kit Box. So make sure to go follow that, interact with him, sign up, all of that. And uh, yeah, make sure to go check all of that out. Paul, a couple more questions for you here, if that's all right. So I see you're the official sponsor of Caversham United. I, that, that's really, really cool. How did that relationship come about and how the how the you know partnership go how's how's it going um so yeah i i also do um uh, provide kits for teams uh, i haven't uh, like uh, team wear so i'm working with kappa i'm working with gdz uh, i'm in talks with a few other people and um so i kind of semi-launched a loyalty scheme whereby if people came on board and bought x amount of 
kit boxes, then they'd be able to redeem it for a team wear for their, their local team. Um, uh, haven't really explored the option much. I was talking to um, uh, Caversim at the time. He had 50 uh, followers on Twitter. <laughs> and um, we, he, we said, I said, hey, just let's do it. He was like, well, how are we going to sell that many kit boxes? And I was like, look, well, let's figure that out afterwards, you know? And um, so, yeah, I've just been there with him at the start. Uh, uh, Paul, he's a really, really good guy. And uh, he just wanted to do to do, to do do well by his team, you know? He just wanted to, to get them new new kit. The, the kit they're using at the moment is a little bit raggedy. It's a few years old. And... Um, Came up with the nickname competition and then the crest competition and a hashtag competition and then the kit uh, competition, which I don't know. Have you been following the whole story or did you go back and look at the thread? Or So I went back and looked at the thread. For anyone who, who may not know, Caversham has about 2,000 followers. So Paul was there when they were at 50 followers. Now they're over 2,000. They're really blowing up on social media, doing fantastic things. And they, a couple months ago, which is when I kind of discovered them, put out a thread detailing kind of their their history over the last few, few months or, or years. And so that's what Paul's alluding to to hear but they're a fantastic follow as well but paul's been there since uh since yeah, the turnaround so, yeah so some of the tweets um were like tens of thousands of impressions mm -hmm. <laughs> and again these guys are just some the league they're just a bunch of guys playing down the field they, you know they don't have any facilities they don't have anything so they're um they're followed now by roma is in at st petersburg Cologne, their best friends on Twitter are Cologne just because they're two goats. <laughs> it's in the, you know, big, big teams. They've gone around the world and back, and like everybody knows who they are all of a sudden, you know. Uh, this was in the January kit box. Uh, yes. Billy Goats. Big up, Caversham. Um, so the kit is currently being made by Kappa and it is ready within the next couple of weeks. And, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful design. And we had designers, they had over a hundred designers all over the world come in with entries. Insane. Like some of the most beautiful things you've ever seen. Uh, Jack Beness um, was the eventual winner. And uh, you saw the winning design, did you? It's lovely. Um, we, we were uh, looking uh, and, <coughs> excuse me, trying to get um uh, a sponsor on board as, as part of the process and then the guys were just like no leave you on let's do it like you know so i was like okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh we put it up for sale there's people there's actually three or four people from america that bought parish and jerseys uh insane insane like sunday league team you know uh so the story's gone 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 around the world we have randomers people's parents and family buying them and um, they have one fan that goes to every game he bought one um, brilliant so they're going to be delivered and then they're obviously looking to do a twitter football competition in the summer as well so there's uh, some of the bigger clubs are going to send their academy or fan <laughs> teams down uh, there's other sunday league teams um, I know uh, Prague Raptors and a few of the other inter uh, international teams might might be popping along as well. So uh, I have a big trophy that I got, like a huge trophy. So I'm going <laughs> to bring that along and uh, and pop over. I've never even met any of these guys, but I feel like I know them really well, you know. And um, I can't wait for them to get their kit. It just it just looks so cool. And to see my logo across the front of it as well, that fills me with with with, with pride. And I'm glad. Uh, I'm really delighted to be part of that story. I think it's a really, really heartwarming story. You know, they're about the plucky underdogs like who are on the on the push for promotion. Love it, love it. It is, yeah. It's an amazing story. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it's just incredible, and the power of kind of social media, the internet, and and all of that. And so, uh, what Paul was talking about there. So, some of the bigger kind of brands or, or 
uh, teams on like that are very active on soccer Twitter, football Twitter, whatever you want to call it, are looking at getting together to play like actual matches with their teams. You know, some of the bigger teams are going to send academies and whatnot over the summertime and put together the, this competition of teams that have more or less only interacted on Twitter are actually going to get together, come together, and, and play this tournament. It's going to be it's going to be an incredible experience. So make sure to to look more into that and and follow that whole thing. So it's oh, it's yeah, really really you'll cool. have to do a broadcast now because we're, we're probably going to um stream some of the matches live oh absolutely have, we're, we're gonna have uh yeah we're gonna we're gonna put some of that up online some of the interviews and uh, uh stream some of the matches and uh it's gonna be great i i, I don't know if these twitter admins like you know they they've just been putting their club out there they, i don't even know if they checked it the rest of the club or whatever <laughs> But uh, it's it's brilliant. It's really, really, really. I love what's happening, uh, especially on Twitter. Um, I think there's a bit of a, a Twitter revolution going on, and um, I think Roma are hugely to 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 thank for that. I think they've done really, 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 really good job, and they deserve um, accommodation for that job. Absolutely. Yeah. Roma, I think Leverkusen's another big one. You touched on Zenit. You know, there's, there's a lot of them, but Roma really does seem to be leading the pack and it, it's incredible to see. So uh, you mentioned, you know, your, your first kit in 1983 United kit. Are you, are you United fan? Like what teams do you support? I want to talk a little bit about your fandom before we wrap things up here, if that's all right with you. Uh, yeah. First and foremost, uh, I'm a United fan, as I said, in, in Ireland, um, we have, uh, Football here is a kind of a poor relation because traditionally, once you got good enough as a teenager, you were shipped off over to England because it was on on, on the doorstep. And, and and football has been somewhat neglected in Ireland uh, from the top brass for the last 20 years or so. Um, there was quite a move made recently whereby Martin O'Neill and Roy Keane uh, were gone. Uh, Roy Keane has just gone to... Um, Nottingham Forest today. Mm -hmm. Nice, rocking a, a keen kit there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, that was a bit kind of an acr acrimonious, and they brought back Mick McCarthy, who used to be um, uh, the manager years ago. Um, but they brought in this guy at under 21 level, Stephen Kenny, who is a bit of a visionary. He's a bit of a to be a more modern type of coach. He plays good, fast, attacking football, uh, puts his faith in you. To, uh, they, there was cl a clamour for him to get the top job, and he's only managed in the League of Ireland, and uh, it's a bit of a leap in terms of the quality. So um, what they did was they gave him the job, but, but only in two years' time. Um, so it's a bit of a succession type of setup. So he's got the under-20. In two years he'll take over? Yeah, so they gave him the okay. under twenty one job now. Okay. And we have traditionally we've been doing pretty poor in the under twenty ones. We haven't qualified for any uh, under twenty one championships in a long time. Um so he's kind of he's gonna cut his teeth in at the under twenty one level. And then hopefully it'll work like Garrett Southgate or Joshua Lowe or, you know, um uh, that, that succession, you know, whereby he'll develop uh, a style, and uh, we 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 will have uh, a better sort of natural succession in in, in Ireland. I, I'm really quite hopeful for for, for the future. I, I I think it it's a bold move, and it was a bit, bit of a political because um, John Delaney, the top of the FAI, he's uh, he's um, he's been ruling it like his personal fight them for a long time, and. There's a lot of sort of anti, at grassroots level, there's an anti sentiment against uh, the amount of money he gets and and the way that, that they've been leaning on the English and the British sort of systems to, to develop our players. And then when they get good enough, then we bring them back and they play for us, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So, so yeah, so um, I I do live in Galway and obviously uh, Galway United, you know, are. are are you know my my local team i do have a soft spot for them uh, and the ladies team is actually doing really really well here in um in galway as well uh, in our recent irish match under 19s half of the team were from galway which is really really unusual um because typically the other side of the country dublin is a very dublin centric so there's great things happening uh, there's great coaching going on at underage level so 
in about five or ten years' time, I'm I'm really excited about where where Irish football is going to be, and we're. I, I think because the Premiership has got so international and so competitive, um, it's forced us to look at our own system. Typically, we just exported everybody. Well, once they got good enough as a teenager, they were gone, you know. Whereas mm-hmm. now they're they're staying here a little bit longer, and the the football ecosystem in Ireland is 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 is, is in a good place. It's it, it's going to be in a very good place, I'd say, in five or ten years' time. Because Irish people are very sporty and very competitive and punch way above our weight in, in a lot of other sports. I mean, we're in contention for winning the Rugby World Cup next year. Uh, we're ranked number two in the world. Which uh, is, you know, there's only four and a half million of us. <laughs> <laughs> there's probably more in your city like than there is in the whole country, you know. And we have um, Gaelic football and we have hurling. If we didn't have Gaelic football and hurling, we would be world champions at everything else. Because no other countries play those two sports. Um, have you seen? Have you ever seen a hurling match? I've seen clips. It's like a wild kind of mix of field hockey and lacrosse. Is the best way I could kind of explain it. Is that is that the right way to think about it or no? No, it's more like ice hockey and lacrosse. Okay. Be ice. It, it, it'd be it's fast. It's faster than field hockey, and it's 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 it's, it's violent, but firm and aggressive. Not violence for the sake of violence probably okay. some of the most skillful sports people in the world um i'd recommend any of your listeners or viewers to to go to go and check it out it's, it's a beautiful beautiful sport and an ancient sport um gaelic football then is similar to australian rules um it'll be halfway between i suppose rugby and soccer uh it's a round ball but you can use your hands as well and you can score goals or points so the majority of people in the country play them a uh, huge following in lots of other different types of sports as well and uh typically yeah punch punch way above our weight especially the boxers for some <laughs> reason <laughs> <laughs> not that we're the fighting irish anymore nobody drinks here anymore uh yeah uh well that's a really fascinating insightful kind of peek behind the scenes because i gotta say we don't you know hear too much about kind of what's happening in, in ireland and the sporting scene you know because other countries seem to dominate so really cool kind of hearing all about that so thank you for for sharing it and i'm hopeful for ireland and uh you know it's always uh, we're kind of going through something similar in the u.s because you know soccer relatively speaking is young we ha- we actually have a really long history but it's so stop start it, we're finally on a path to to moving forward but it's fascinating kind of seeing all the infrastructure being laid and seeing kind of looking ahead 5 10 15 20 years down the road and being a part of what's being built right now has always been fascinating to me so um you know, I, I, it sounds like something similar is happening in, in Ireland where they're really laying kind of the groundwork for something to be great in the not too distant future. So it's really cool to hear. Yeah, I think it's slightly more exciting in America because there's a lot of new clubs coming and they're building everything from scratch. So from scratch. Whereas we have to kind of strip down things that were there but weren't necessarily working very well for the last 40 50 60 years uh, but in america i think there's how many people came to the um, uh, the the american uh game against panama there was only six thousand or seven thousand was there yeah i think the official tenants was like nine thousand or something like that there, there was a lot of uh issues with yeah w- that so went into that, that. And I, and I think it, there, there seems to be a bit of a, you know, a reverb against the MLS at the moment. And uh, I, I think um, there is definitely an underlying kind of revolution going on there. And I think that will, that will forward. And, and I don't even think the, the, the pro-rel issue is, is going to necessarily be an issue if the growth of these clubs and the movement happens because they'll create their own story and their own leagues and their own cups that that might even happen outside of the mls ecosystem and but, but grow to be bigger because people people will vote with their feet so uh definitely something the it, it, it's an interesting horizon uh in america and, and 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 i'm delighted to see it because uh i think it's i think it's good for the sport in general you know 
Absolutely. Yeah. It's a fascinating time to be alive. I'm enjoying it all, trying to take it all in and just, you know, soak it up because this really is kind of a historic time for the sport in this country. So I'm loving it. Before I ask my final question, is there anything we didn't, you know, I didn't ask or that, you know, you, you wanted to talk about? Um, uh, I guess to, if you have any clubs, um, definitely interested in talking to more American clubs. Uh, I don't know if there's anybody associated. It doesn't matter uh, what size the club is. If you're interested in getting your story out, uh, I have customers in probably 15, 16 countries now at the moment. And uh, mostly centered in around Europe. But if there's any clubs who are interested, you know, even they can get in touch in, in uh, through the social media channels. Definitely want to have a talk with them. Uh, it's a great way of uh, building a new relationship. And if, you know, they can send over stickers, it doesn't have to be kit, but if they're mm -hmm. interested in getting their story out, uh, it'll help me to grow uh, because the more diversity and the more types of clubs I have, it's, it's, it's better for the customers. And um, yeah, so if anybody's out there that thinks it might, uh, fit the bill on that uh make sure they uh they reach out yeah Absolutely. So if you're affiliated with the club, reach out to Paul again. His contact info is listed in the video description, podcast show notes. Also Christian. So my brother, uh, Christian, who's also a host on this podcast, he plays for a men's league team in the Philly area. I don't know how much merchandise they sell, if they sell kits or anything like that, but I'll, I'll reach out to him, have him get in contact with you, see if they have anything. Again, it's, it's not like a, a name people would know uh, around, around the world, but I know your, your brand is just trying to connect, you know, all different types of clubs and sizes. So it's like well, a men's who, league who club. Known, who would have known about St. Anthony's exactly. or United this time last year, you know? Yep. So, you know, it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if they don't, they don't have to have kids. You know, they can still send a pamphlet, a fridge magnet, a badge, uh, uh, whatever. And then it can redirect people to their club shop. So it's it's a realistic way of, uh, of, of clubs generating extra income for themselves. Absolutely. So I'll definitely put him in contact <laughs> with you. Last question. So we, we asked this of all our, our guests, uh, a lot of negativity happening in the world. So we try to keep things positive here. You can take this any direction you want. What's the thing you're most excited about happening in your soccer world? Again, however you want to take it. In my soccer world or in, in the world soccer. of soccer? Either. Uh, so your personal soccer world, but again, you know, there's no rules here. However you want to answer the question, just something positive to leave uh, everybody uh, ending on a positive note here. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to echo, you know, what, what, what's going on in, 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 in Twitter. I've spoken to clubs in Indonesia, in Malaysia, in Zimbabwe, in Argentina, in, I was speaking to a club from Macedonia today. I don't, I, I would probably struggle to pick out Macedonia on the map. I, I know <laughs> where it is, uh, but like, you know what I mean? I, I this, this bringing you know, clubs together. It's a come full circle from the 1980s and the, the stabbings and the riots and, and the rivalry and, and, and all that. And it's, um, you know, historically in the UK, it's, it's, like, it's like Gaelic football is here. It's very, very tribal. You're, you're one team till you die and you hate everybody else. And those lines are blurring a little bit, you know, and it's, um, you know, in, I talked to some Americans and, you know, they support Man United and Liverpool. And I'm like, oh, that's great, <laughs> you know? And a few years ago, I would have been like, that's, what are you talking about? That's impossible. <laughs> but now I'm kind of coming around more to them and saying, well, they don't have the rivalry. They're not from that town. They don't know the, the animosity and the history behind it. And they're just supportive of two different teams because of X, Y, and Z. Uh, so I think, I, I, I think that bringing people together as is, is is the most positive thing happening in my world of, of, of football at the moment. It's brought us together. It's brought your lovely face to this <laughs> lovely face. It's brought your listeners uh, together. It's brought um, uh, it's it's it given me an environment to build a business in. It's uh, educated me on on different clubs and countries around the world that I that I wouldn't have known about and uh, and and that's. I think that's positive. I think, I think that's cool. Absolutely. Lovely. Well said, Paul. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, we have everything linked in the video description, podcast show notes, but can you quickly tell people uh, where they can find you online? 
Instagram at football kitbox, Twitter at football kitbox, website footballkitbox.com. Facebook, if anybody still uses Facebook anymore, <laughs> it's really inactive. Don't go onto it. You'd swear I, uh, I wasn't even using it. Um, it's Facebook or footballkitbox.com. Uh, send me an email, paul at footballkitbox.com. Um, meditate on the top of the hill and just think of my name. <laughs> you might get in touch. Who knows? And... Um, Definitely link up with some of the clubs that you'll see featured on my on my social media and give them a shout out. Give them a follow because it's really more about them than it, it is about me. You know? I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Paul. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Listeners and viewers, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll talk to you soon. Say everybody.